this Dark Art Guitars video, I go through my process of creating a beautiful natural shell inlay for one of my guitars. Starting from the design created together with the customer, I take you through my machining strategies of how I create this fairly intricate design on my CNC. And don't worry, I will also show you the final guitar in the end. Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Now, while the CNC is cutting away at this roasted maple for the neck here, uh, this will, as you can see, be a guitar with a headstock, uh, which uh, might not be very surprising for you if you're new to this channel, but if you know me a little bit, I mostly build headless guitars, so this is uh, quite something special for me. Actually, I'm going to quickly just tell you a bit of background for this guitar uh, while the neck here is cutting, since that's not the main topic of this video. Uh, the client for this uh, reached out to me, uh, asking me to build essentially a super strat, which uh, is not really something I do. I've never built a super strat. I've only ever built one uh, guitar with a headstock. That was the Cyberpunk build that you might have seen here on uh, this channel. And uh, since that, I've just built mostly ergonomic uh, headless guitars. But uh, all the other specs were just in line with what I usually like to build and he wasn't scared away by the price for a custom guitar either. So uh, I decided to take on the project and designed uh, together with the client uh, this Super Strat. Now as you can see in the model here, this is by no means just a boring old uh, black guitar. It features a lot of different woods and accent pieces as well as a bunch of design. Now, while uh, there's a lot of to go into in this guitar, in this video I'm actually just going to focus on the inlay itself. This is my first time working with natural shell inlay. I've done lots of inlays before from other materials, as well as a lot of times I just use epoxy with different pigments and powders mixed in, as that allows me to only create the pockets and then essentially pour in the inlay, which some might call cheating, I just call uh, being able to do more intricate inlays uh, without uh, spending hours and hours. But for this design it was very obvious that uh, natural shell was the way to go, as you just get kind of an iridescence and sheen to it that you cannot achieve with uh, epoxy. Working closely with the client, we came up with this uh, kind of Japanese-inspired uh, design where uh, there are these cherry blossoms and uh, the, some of the leaves are falling down to mark the different uh, positions on the neck. Now, this kind of style and design of cherry blossoms uh, for an inlay is not completely uh, my idea. Uh, the client did come to me uh, with a reference of a different guitar that is using something similar, but we just used that kind of as a rough uh, guideline and then uh, came up with this design uh, from scratch. Now that we're a bit familiar with the design, let's uh, hop on over to the manufacturing workspace where I want to uh, show you how I actually uh, cut these pieces. So I start off here, this is very similar to how I do most of my fretboards. I just faced it uh, to the uh, bit thicker than the final thickness. Cutting the outline. The nut slot. And then here, since uh, this will be a spoke wheel adjustment, I uh, cut away uh, this pocket as well and uh, drill a small hole for the magnet. Then here is where the actual magic happens. This uh, 2D adaptive uh, strategy here, I'm using a 0.58mm uh, end mill, that's the same I use uh, to cut the fret slots later, that's why I'm using the specific size and it's well, already loaded in the machine. And I'm using that uh, to adaptive away all of the different pockets. Now this end mill, just like a lot of the other ones you're going to see here, uh, was provided to me by Precise Bits. Uh, they're not, not directly sponsoring this video in any way, uh, but I'm really impressed with uh, their uh, bits here that they provided. And uh, It's a three flute end mill uh, designed uh, for shell cutting as well as uh, hardwoods. And uh, this allows me to actually feed at some really decent speeds and uh, know that the tool is going to last. So here you can see my feeds and speeds. I am running at 30,000 RPM because I can on my Spinergy X22 spindle. Um, a lot of you might only be able to go to 24,000, but then you just well can scale the rest accordingly. I'm cutting at around uh, 2,000 millimeters a minute uh, to give me a uh, feed per tooth, uh, which is actually the important part of like 
0.22 millimeters. This is like three and a half to four percent of the tool diameter. And that's essentially how I compute kind of how fast I want to feed and how you can also uh, compute that uh, depending on how fast you can uh, feed and what kind of tool you're using. For the step downs here I'm using 0.6 millimeters, so essentially one times the tool diameter which uh, the wood here I haven't even mentioned as zero Cody. Uh, it is uh, not quite as hard as ebony but still definitely on the hard side of hardwoods and it can be a bit resinous if it is uh, too fresh but this one has been in my workshop for well over a year so the resin has uh, cured nicely uh, so it, it should not be uh, too gummy anymore. Then because I do want quite sharp corners uh, here for some of these pieces uh, so it looks nice, I'm actually going back in with a 0.4 millimeter end mill just with a rest machining uh, to tackle all of these uh, sharp corners and kind of make the whole design look more crisp. And at that point we have all of the uh, inlay pockets cut. These are uh, two millimeters deep in the fretboard here and I still have about 0.2 millimeters of extra meat over top. Then to cut all of these uh, different inlay pieces, uh, what I actually did to kind of arrange them in a way that makes it easier for cutting as they kind of scatter all over the place here is I uh, went into Fusion here and uh, created a manufacturing model. This is from within uh, the manufacturer workspace. You can here uh, on the setup create a manufacturing model and that essentially creates a linked duplicate of your design where you then can uh, go in, you can edit it and you can move things around. Now to get these arrangements here I used the modify arrange command here and then I selected uh, all the inlay pieces and this is uh, how I got these arrangements in here and if you haven't uh, used this tool before, you essentially just select all the bodies and then you define kind of an envelope, this is how big, in this case, your piece of uh, inlay material is, and then it will uh, do its best to kind of arrange all of these pieces. Now if not all of them necessarily fit, uh, then it will just leave some of them out, uh, I'm not sure, I think here in this case, yeah, not quite all of them fit, so just cut uh, this twice, as all of the different pedals are the same size. And then uh, I, of course, did the same thing here for uh, the stems. The material I will be using is a Mother of Pearl for the petals and abalone uh, for uh, the stems. Now, to cut all of the, these petals out, I'm uh, using two different tools. First, I'm actually starting off with a 30-degree V-tipped uh, kind of chamfering tool. And this I'm using to just kind of score the outline. This way by chamfering them first, for one my tiny end mill later will have kind of starting point uh, as this chamfer tool is a lot more rigid than the 0.4 millimeter uh, end mill I will be using. And secondly by using the chamfer tool first I will get a little bit of uh, kind of an edge break here which will make it a lot easier to uh, install them later as there's no sharp corner. Looking at uh, the feeds and speeds here, I have a separate profile that I created for cutting shell and that's because cutting shell you need to go quite slow. All of the things I just told you for cutting wood about not wanting to go too slow doesn't really count for shell anymore because you are just creating dust, you're not creating wood shavings as this is such a hard and brittle material. So uh, while I'm still going at 30,000 rpm, I'm absolutely crawling with uh, 270 millimeters a minute here, which is very slow. And you can see I'm taking off only four and a half microns uh, of feed per tooth. Luckily, all of these pieces are very sl uh, small, but still uh, you can see that this operation takes quite a long time. And that is with a very fast spindle. Then uh, the actual uh, cutting out of the pieces, I'm um, using this 0.4 millimeter long reach end mill. Now if we look at a tool geometry here, you can see that here in the front, the yellow part, that is the actual cutting edge. And behind it, there is a long, uh, also thin shaft. Now this does make the tool very weak, but I need to cut over two millimeters deep. And uh, most uh, like tiny tools will uh, have the kind of angle coming out here which makes the tool stronger but means I cannot cut that deep. This is a tool specifically designed by uh, precise bits for uh, shell cutting. It also has three flutes, I might have mentioned that before, which just means I can go slightly faster as there is an extra cutting edge uh, compared to two flute tools. 
and here I'm going even slower as with the V cut before because this tool is just super fragile. Now if you were using a bigger tool because you don't have such tiny radii then you can of course go faster as well. But with a 0.4 millimeter end mill in a material as hard as shell there's no room for error. So here I'm cutting at uh, 160 millimeters a minute which is just 1.7 microns of feet per tooth. For step times, I'm stepping down at 0.2 millimeters, so half of the tool's diameter. And um, that just makes sure that the tool has a bigger chance of surviving. So although these pieces here are tiny, it still takes about half an hour to uh, cut out uh, this batch, and then I need to uh, cut a second one uh, to have enough of these pieces. To hold the material down while cutting, I am just super gluing it uh, to a piece of rich light here because that's just what I had on hand. But you could use any substrate here really. You can use a, a block of aluminum or anything, anything that is flat and uh, allows you to uh, super glue stuff too. And then once I'm done, I'm just pouring on some acetone uh, that allows to super glue to kind of soften up and pop off. This works great for uh, the solid model of pearl here. But later in the abalone, uh, that did kind of bite me and uh, was not the best idea because the abalone I'm using is a kind of an, an assemblage, which means that it is made up of a bunch of uh, different small slivers so that they can get a bigger piece. And uh, the acetone also dissolves the glue that holds the different pieces together. So uh, that was not the smartest move there. Other than that, the Abalone uh, cutting is more of the same, just slightly different pieces. And now, with all of these very carefully uh, calculated, uh, uh, fairly conservative uh, speeds and feeds, I managed to get through all of this without actually breaking any tools. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, with these micro tools, it doesn't take a lot to break them, and I've definitely broken quite a lot of them. But cutting shell uh, while slow and not very easy. Once you have a good recipe for it, it's fairly reliable and uh, you can just let the machine run and uh, it is going to work. Then with all the pieces uh, cut out, I uh, kind of cleaned them up a little bit and made sure that all of the glue residue was uh, gone and uh, it was time for assembly. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, I cut these to the exact size, meaning that uh, I did not apply any sort of offsets or uh, made the inlay pieces smaller. Now, this was a bit tight. Uh, they all worked and uh, did fit in, uh, but I had to uh, use quite a bit of persuasion, uh, which, well, caused some of the abalone pieces to break slightly. Now, I still got it in, and because it is already kind of patchworked together, you cannot see any of the uh, kind of break lines. But in the future, I might just uh, make them ever so slightly smaller, maybe like a 0.05 uh, millimeter uh, offset uh, or something like that on each side. So that would be around uh, 2 thou. Now you could also see that I was using a light here to install of all of these pieces. And that is just to get the orientation of uh, the mother of pearl pieces in a way where they kind of all shine in a similar way. Now they're not going to be perfectly identical and I don't want that either. But uh, with Mother of Pearl, you often get a certain, like one very specific direction where it's kind of dull and doesn't shine much. And I don't want uh, most of the pieces to be very sparkly from the place perspective. And then one and two to just kind of be dull because they're in the wrong direction. Then to radius, I am using a special radiusing uh, cutter from uh, Precise Pits once again. So if we look at the tool here, you can see it has a flat bottom and then kind of a rounded corner. And this is uh, great for flattening a fretboard because it is mostly flat, but you do want a radius. So uh, with this, you can take much bigger step overs than you could if you just had a round uh, bottom, as then you create a, like a narrow trough. Uh, but still, by not having an edge here, you don't get very uh, harsh lines dug in uh, where you have more of the radius. So here I'm doing a step over of 0 0.5 uh, millimeters and then the tool itself, actually you want to feed quite quickly. I'm feeding here at uh, 6,000 millimeters a minute, once again running at 30,000 RPM. This is a bit slower as I run this tool in if it's just wood, as the shell uh, does need a little bit slower speed, uh, but that's still, well, it's decently fast. Then to cut the fret slots, uh, I'm again using this V-tip uh, tool to first score the fret slots. Uh, this will uh, 
again, provide kind of the same two benefits as with the inlay pieces, as that it creates a kind of guiding slot for the small tool that will come later. And at the same time, it also chamfers the edges already. So when I go to insert the frets, I don't have to uh, kind of break the edge manually. The way I'm programming this in Fusion is I'm using a trace toolpath. I have like my fret lines projected onto the fretboard surface. And then I'm using the trace uh, toolpath with an axial offset. Uh, this I just uh, kind of calculated uh, based on the tool that, uh, geometry to get uh, just a slight chamfer on either side when it is done. And then uh, to cut the actual slots, I'm using the 0.58 millimeter end mill from before. Here running at 2000 uh, millimeters per minute, so same settings as before. And uh, going down in 0.6 millimeter step downs, which requires uh, kind of three step downs uh, since we already uh, cut in partially with the chamfering tool. And here now with uh, these fret slots, you can also see why uh, uh, there was a kind of a break in the design here. And that is just so that the fret slots only cut through wood and the frets themselves are also only biting into the wood. This makes cutting easier. This makes installing the frets easier and uh, avoids kind of cracking uh, the inlay. And the fret itself will hide all of uh, these corners and it will look like it's one continuous piece. And with that, uh, the fretboard inlay is done. I can take it off the machine and uh, start gluing it onto the neck. I have moved uh, to using a vacuum system for that. I just kind of have these vacuum uh, bags uh, that are used for composites usually. So they're quite thin. I only get like two or three uses out of them. Uh, but I can get this kind of tube uh, looking thing, uh, which allows me to very easily uh, install uh, this fretboard and get even clamping pressure all around. And using this method, I no longer have any issues about uh, uh, there being any sort of gaps and uh, I get like just perfect adhesion everywhere. After uh, the fretboard is uh, glued to the neck, I then uh, take a leveling beam and make sure that it is perfectly flat. And uh, I also use a radiusing block, of course, to make sure that the radius is perfect. And this is when the design really starts to look beautiful. I usually take the fretboard up to like 800 or 1000 grit uh, before I apply a, a light coat of oil. And then a couple of uh, months later, I have finished the entire guitar and I will leave you here with some glamour shots of uh, how it turned out. If you want to see more of the kind of in-between steps of building the rest of the guitar, do go check out my Instagram. I post a lot more on there. Also, there's a lot of guitar builds that never make it onto YouTube uh, that I only share uh, all over there on Instagram. Otherwise, you can also, of course, check out my website uh, for much more. Uh, I also have uh, some 3D uh, files there for sale, as well as, of course, pictures of all of the completed guitars. Finally, I'm now also offering consulting services. So if you are a luthier or are uh, building things and you need help uh, with CNC or 3D modeling, specifically more like kind of loosely focused stuff. Uh, if you want me to uh, kind of help you uh, find the right tool paths, uh, adjust the feeds and speed for your machine, do contact me. I uh, have more details on the website as well and uh, I can help you out uh, to get some uh, more uh, productiveness out of your CNC. So with that, Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.